ladies and gentlemen. If you can just have your attention for a minute, please. Ladies and gentlemen, please could I have your attention for one moment, please? Could I politely ask if you haven't already do, done so, would you please switch your mobiles off or switch them on to silent? Thank you.
Did, did we decide not to mention husband? Sorry? Did we decide not to mention husband? No, 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 because it's a bit confident. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah, yeah, thank you for all your help. You're right. We're glad when it's yeah, not well. People are standing on the side of the um, yeah. standing on the side. It's, it's all real, isn't it? He's got a little, yeah, it's a bit too real. Please tell him um, mm. I will say if you're able to stand because there'll be quite a portion of the back end of the service of standing. Mm. And I will say people are able to great, but if not, please remain seated. Yeah. Thank you.
Loving can hurt Loving can hurt sometimes But it's the only thing Ladies and gentlemen, for those who are seated, if you're able, would you please stand? When it gets hard You know it can get hard sometimes It is the only thing that makes us feel alive Welcome to our service of thanksgiving and celebration for the life of Paul, who sadly passed away on the 1st of September, aged 56 years. Loving son, loving brother, brother-in-law, father, uncle, and friend to so many. The whole family wish to express their sincere gratitude to all of those that have traveled to be here with them today, and all those joining us by a live stream. In a time of solemn sadness and immense grief of their loss, the outpouring of sincerity, the love, the messages of condolence, the cards and the support that's been received has been truly overwhelming. And it provides them tremendous solace at a very difficult time. They're filled with the gratitude that so many people care and are with them to celebrate Paul's life today. And it's quite prophetic that part of Paul's final journey takes place here on a site that Ash Hill Farm, which was originally run by his grandfather many years ago. 
depending upon who you ask the question, what was Paul like, would open up a whole range of answers. Some similar, quite a few very different, and some that probably won't have been heard of up until today. Fonley describes him as, Paul was just Paul, hard to fully put into words. A one-off, generous, a whirlwind, super soft, strong-willed, but with the ability to main equilib maintain equilibrium between the two. Apparently he was stubborn, he was a good dad, and his children most certainly display all of the some parts of the special qualities that Paul held. If three people chose to write a book autobiography in Paul's life, which one would you buy? And I'm sure that probably the answer would be all three. Each book giving a different account of his various life stories with, I am sure, many, many anecdotes. Recalling his achievements within motorsport and others focusing on his involvement with his charitable works. How he must have hit many barriers and obstacles along the way to success. And how despite the failures that he must have endured along the way, he rose above the adversity to reach the pinnacle of his profession. But either way, each book would be a captivating read, a page turner, a bestseller. And speaking to people that have known Paul over many years, particularly from an early age, he was described as a larger than life character. He was well liked, he was loved, mischievous, unique, Caring, fun-loving, generous, humorous, dedicated, motivated, driven, ambitious, and entrepreneurial. But amongst all of that, he was ultra-competitive. Also described as a charmer, very charismatic, <laughs> and he had an aura around him a presence that filled any room that he walked into. If we break all of that down, and if you look at the accolades that he achieved over the years, he would have had to have been ruthless in a professional context. And displaying all of the listed attributes to sustain that success he had over a number of years. But ultimately, he also realized that you're only as good as those who are around you the team, the unsung heroes that provide essential backup, invaluable to any success. And whilst we're on the subject of team, there's the old adage that if you prepare to plan, if you don't prepare to plan, plan to fail. And he was fortunate enough in those early days to rely on his dad, Frank, and his brother, Mark, they prepared the bikes for him, but quote, he'd just turn up after we'd done all the work, put the stickers on and claim all the glory. But he also realized that without that team ethos, it all counted for absolutely nothing. You can have all of the talent in the world, but without those vital cogs behind the scenes, the success would be harder to come by. We all like to be loved and we all like to be liked. But life in general doesn't offer that idealism all the time for lots of reasons. But the outpouring of many comments posted since Paul passed away, there was a common theme of respect. And at the same time, sadness for his loss. But a comment that struck a chord was, he was a champion and he helped many others become champions too. He was inspirational on many levels and he encouraged those around him. And as sad as an occasion today provides, it's a timely reminder to reflect on how life 
our, how short our lifespans are. And Paul's message would be to embrace each day with a smile on your face, to try to light up the life of others that you come into contact with, who are maybe struggling, that we don't recognise the struggles that are going on in their own lives. Embracing the good and the bad days on equal terms and taking each day as a bonus. We all face those daily trials, those tribulations, those challenges, and we do, as part of life, experience failure along the way to success. But how we handle them moving forward defines our characters. To rise above the challenges and to start all over again. And Paul did that on many occasions. And that's a family trait, it's within the bird DNA. It demonstrates his willpower, his sheer determination for the battle. And he had the battles along the way. And he constantly overcame them. And there's a quote from Teddy Roosevelt that sums up Paul and his challenges. And probably many of you here today that have experienced failure. It is not the critic who counts. It's not the man who points out the strong man stumbled or where the doer of deeds could have done better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs and comes short again and again, who knows the great enthusiasms, the great devotions, and spends himself in a worthy cause. Who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly. So this his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who know neither victory nor defeat. And Paul leaves a valuable legacy, a point of reflection, that those whom we love and love us the most cannot be taken for granted. The position of wealth, of success, that we all strive to work, to attain, can be taken away at any time. And maybe today is that day when we think about our loved ones more consciously. And we make sure that we tell them just how much they mean to us. A day to consider friendships too. For lots of reasons, we can lose touch with people. There can be a breakdown of communications as we're all busy with our lives, striving to build careers and looking and bringing up our own families. But if there's one situation, if there's one regret, one upset, one argument, disagreement or rift that led to a breakdown in those communications, it's not too late to forgive and to reconcile, for life is too short, and I'm sure that Paul would endorse those comments. If you can change the way that you look at things, the things you look at change. Life is 10% what happens to you, and 90% how you react to it. Life isn't about being rich, being popular, being highly educated or perfect. It's about being humble and kind to each other. And that's always difficult to strive to achieve 100% of the time. Paul tried to lead life by those values. And I'm sure that sometimes that would have been difficult to maintain with all the pressure that was placed upon his shoulders. But let's be thankful for having had him in our lives, for the significant contributions that he made over many years, not just to sport, but to many other compassionate things that he did, particularly his charitable works, that many of them sailed under the radar. He led a full and colorful life Things will never be the same without him. 
However, his legacy will continue to live on through you and his memory will never be erased. I'm sure Paul will be above selecting and constructing the new team to compete in the heavily paddock, pushing others to up their game and they'll be looking over their shoulders knowing that the competition has just been stimulated to new levels. May Paul rest in peace. Amen. I'm now going to invite family friend Sarah to come forward and read a poem for us. He is gone. You can shed tears that he is gone, or you can smile because he has lived. You can close your eyes and pray that he will come back, or you can open your eyes and see all that he has left. Your heart can be empty because you can't see him, or it can be full of the love that you shared. You can turn your back on yesterday, sorry, you can turn your back on tomorrow and live yesterday, or you can be happy for tomorrow because of yesterday. You can remember him and only that he is gone, or you can cherish his memory and let it live on. You can cry and close your mind, be empty and turn your back, or you could do what he would want, smile, open your eyes, love, and go on, till we meet again. And now uh, Jordan's going to come forward and read the family tribute. Thank you. Paul, Birdie, Birdman, Bossman. But to Frank, Lexi and I, just Dad. Where do I start with a man like my dad when there are a million and one stories I could share, but I think a million of them are probably not appropriate for a day like today. My dad was a one-off. He was the man that gave myself and many others endless opportunities through generosity and belief. The races and championships he has won speak for themselves. But racing wasn't all my dad was. In all honesty, he was a big softy. He was a real dog lover. The bigger, the better. The more dribble, the better. And the dopier the dog, the better. Over the last few years, all my dad wanted was a dog named Dave. So last year, my brother and I took a trip to Surrey to pick up Dave and Harper. My dad adored them and they made a house a home. My dad's other love was horses, a love in which he inherited from my brilliant grandma and granda. I've never seen a prouder man than my dad than when we watched our racehorse taking risks walk in the parade ring ready for the Grand National in 2021, along with winning the Scottish Grand National just beforehand. Both moments I will treasure forever. I think we all forget how talented my dad was. From motocross to supermoto, rallying, and back in the day, he was a cracking goalkeeper, so he told me many times. Looking back at old photos and videos, it makes me realize how good my dad was on a bike. I never really took him seriously, especially after him showing me the metal rod that was used to fix his broken leg from a huge motocross, he'd had, motocross crash he'd had back in the day. The rod's still in our house on a shelf in the kitchen, and many of you here will have seen it. I guess it's some kind of initiation when you come into our house for the first time. In my dad's 56 years, he achieved a lot. It's no secret that his busy, biggest success was his race team. Paul Bird Motorsport is 27 years of absolute hard work, passion and dedication. It was his life. I am so proud of everything he has done in BSB and it's pretty cool to say that my dad is the most successful team owner in British history. Eight championships, 139 wins and counting, you too. <laughs> but most importantly, he gained friendships to last a lifetime. My dad reached the pinnacle of motorcycle racing, MotoGP. He never really gave himself enough credit for what he and the team pulled together in for those few years. It's something that most people can only dream of. But he and a few lads from Cumbria pulled it together. 
The more I think about it, the crazier it sounds, but dad being dad, he pulled it off. PB loved a crazy idea. He often used to start a phone call on a Monday morning with over the weekend, I watched F1 and I think we need. At that moment, we stopped him in his tracks because we knew a bomb was about to be dropped. One of his finest moments was us launching our partnership with Vision Track back in the day and we were at the top of the shard and this was my dad to a T and I love it. My first year at school included one of dad's crazy moments. I was about four years old and my mum had got called into the head teacher's office. She started with, Jordan's a lovely student. We're really lucky to have her. She's kind, caring, and a real pleasure to be around, but she does have an, a, wild, a wild imagination. Occasionally, at the sight of a low-flying helicopter, she looks up and said, well, that's probably my dad. We think it's brilliant that she's so aware of her surroundings, but maybe the imagination needs to be toned down. My mum let out a giggle and said, if only it was her imagination. I could spot the helicopter from miles away, but I actually didn't need to, because when my dad was traveling south, he'd come to my school and dive bomb the playground. Legend. <laughs> I have to say, my dad's craziest idea came in 2015, when he decided to put my brother in a race car. As most of you know, my brother and I have been in racing all our lives, and we've never known anything different. But at this point, Frank had shown absolutely no interest in riding a bike or getting behind the wheel of a race car. But of course, my dad didn't think that was a problem. Long story short, my brother had a test in a Janetta Junior, thanks to Norman Burgess, and six weeks later, he was lining up for his first race at Brands Hatch. And as they say, the rest is history. I know my dad was living his dream through Frank. He was his toughest critic, yet his biggest supporter, something I know Frank will keep with him forever. To be honest, anything any of us decided to do, my dad supported us 100%. My sister Lexi was a cracker for this. I don't think there's anything she hasn't tried. She's done four wheels, two wheels, cycling, mountain biking, athletics, and finally, I think she's settled for football. She isn't a goalie, even after all my dad's persuasion, but I know my dad was super proud of Lexi, especially when he watched her on the pitch. I will miss a lot about my dad, I will miss his wind-ups. I will miss him playing videos on full volume at any time in any place. I'll miss his classic heated seat turn on while in 30 degree heat on holiday. I'll miss him sneakily, sneakily knocking my car into neutral while sat at traffic lights, putting chili sauce into food on a race weekend and seeing who we can catch out. But mostly I will just miss him. My dad, the man that made me the woman I am today. The three of us have a lot of years ahead of us without our dad, but one, thing, one thing's for sure, we'll carry a part of him with us every single day for the rest of our lives. Thank you for everything, Dad. The experiences, the laughter, the chaos, and the crazy ideas. I will continue to do you proud, support my brother and sister, and succeed in anything we do, just as you would have wanted. Thank you for being the best. I love you, Dad. We now have a, a hymn for our reflection. So for those of you that are seated, if you're able, would you please stand? The words are on the inside of the booklet. And it's an also an opportunity for us to reflect on the many different experiences that you all have of Paul, the good times you had with him, and the impact and the memories he had upon your lives.
please be seated. A reading from the Gospel of John. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the place to where I am going. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know the place where you are going, so how can we know the way? And Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. As we continue to be reflective and to celebrate Paul's life, may we stand again, please, as we sing our next hymn, All Things Bright and Beautiful. May I ask you if you're able to continue standing for the final part of our service. 
we recite the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So we've now come to the final part of the service where we have to say a final farewell to Paul. There is blessing in the world where there is love and care. There is always hope and happiness. Like the living life of a burning candle or quietly singing a melodious song to a lonely broken heart. Like beautiful flowers to a garden or rainy days after a long drought. That it is you and me who care and can make a difference. They say there is a reason. They say that time will heal. But neither time nor reason will change the way we feel. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to laugh and a time to weep, a time to dance, and a time to mourn. And sadly today is a time to weep and mourn for Paul. So into the freedom of the wind, the fells and sunshine, we let you go into the dance of the stars and the planets. We let you go into the wind's breath and the hands of the star maker, we let you go. Paul, you were always greatly loved and respected, and you always will be you will be greatly missed. You had a gift to make people feel good about themselves, a gift to reassure and guide them in times of uncertainty. The memories of you will always live on, so rest in peace and go safely home. Amen. I ask you to continue standing, please, as we have a minute's appreciation in memory of Paul's life. Thank you. Thank you. Please be seated. So our final poem today is called A Life Well Lived. A life well lived is a precious gift of hope and strength and grace. From someone who has made our world a brighter, better place. It's filled with moments sweet and sad, with smiles and sometimes tears, with friendships formed and good times shared and laughter through the years. A life well lived is a legacy of joy, of pride and pleasure, a living, lasting memory our grateful hearts will treasure. Paul's family, thank you for your attendance today at this service of thanksgiving. And you are warmly invited to join them at the Roundthorn Country House Beacon Hedge for refreshments following the service. And I would ask as the final music is playing, um, once the family leave, if you could join them, please, back at the Roundthorn, where I'm sure you'll all catch up on the many stories that you have to share. If desired donations in memory of Paul, will be divided between Hospice at Home, Carlisle and North Lakeland, Pride of Cumbria Air Ambulance, 
and Down syndrome association. They may be made at the service as we leave or care of Richardson's funeral directors. Thank you.
Yeah. 